everybody, it's Karen. Thank you very much for joining me. I have got a fun card today. It's a theater style fold card. It's part of a blog hop between Heffy Doodle and uh, Gerda Steiner Designs. And I think these stamps just go so well together. These are the You Go Gull stamps from Heffy Doodle and the Big Bite stamps from Gerda Steiner Designs. So I would say take a screenshot of this or pause and write down these measurements. I'm not very high tech, obviously you can see. So it, the best thing is just copy this down somehow. Uh, I'll try to mention them as we go along, but I thought I'd start by showing you how the card works because for me, that's what makes the most sense typically. So here you can see on the side, the, the curtains have got that little sleeve there that keeps them in place. And there is the, the stage that goes through the whole thing. So the way this works, those it comes right apart. There's nothing gluing it together. It, it can come apart. Um, this is the front. Uh, so those are the sleeves. And you can see that there's quite a large opening on the front. So I like to double it up. Here's the stage. Now it will slide back and forth from side to side. And then on either side are what I call the curtains. Uh, and they will just fold in just like that and then you have a little surprise on the inside which I love <laughs> so I'm going to start here these are the the uh, curtains I make these just a little bit narrower so they are four and an eighth inch by five and a half inches and you crease it at the two and three quarter inch mark and the one and three eighths inch mark so halfway and then halfway again to the beginning and then just one of them you rotate around and because I'm going to do ink blending I'm not going to crease both of these so I'm just starting with the very outside one um, this is the part that's going to end up being glued down and you'll see here I've already started a bit of ink blending on the back of my card and what I'm doing now is I'm just positioning these the way they're going to go and I'm just masking taping them down to keep them together so that when I do the ink blending they're not going to be moving all over the place and I'll have some sort of continuous line here. So I'm just reinforcing that crease. So for my templates or my mask I'm actually using this scrap piece of acetate that I had previously die cut with uh, these waves. It's the same waves I'm going to use in a little bit here. So I'm just ink blending some salty ocean and peacock feathers and I'm not being very careful because it really won't show. But I've done both curtains, the back and the stage as well with that. And then the sky, I have done some stenciling with a, a stencil from A Colorful Life Designs is the name of the company and it's this Cloud Edger stencil. i would just been asked about it before but it works really well. Now this is a laminating folder that I have cut in half and I've done some alcohol ink blending in. I've used Ranger Mermaid and Tranquil. And once it's dry, you just fold it up and run it through the, the laminator and it comes out beautifully. You can use either side of it. Now these are some wave dies that I've chosen to use. I like them because there's three different dies in this set and I needed to do some extended <laughs> die cutting here to make that go all the way across so I chose these ones now I'm trying to show you here that little white edge sometimes that happens when I've uh, cut it or if you do a fold and all I do is I put it in a parchment folder and run it back through the laminator and it comes out beautifully and I needed to use both sides of this die cut so I definitely wanted that to be fixed. So I'm just showing you here, this is the second crease that I'm doing. It's uh, You crease this fold in the same direction as you had done the first one as well. So they're all going to go in the same direction. They're all mountain folds, I guess you could call them. Looks a little bit like a box when you stand it up like that. And the part that hasn't had any ink blending done on it is the part that's going to end up being glued down to that side, to the outside edges of that curtain in kind of the opposite direction that I expect it to go, but it works. Okay, so now I've uh, actually glued some of my images down. I've got the shark fin and the, and the coral from Gerda Steiner Designs um, stamp set and the little message in a bottle. 
And I've actually started uh, attaching that laminate. Now, you can't glue this. It just doesn't dry. So the ATG is what I found. I did a little test on this, and I found that the ATG worked the best. It was hardly visible compared to some other tapes. And so what I've done is I've uh, attached these uh, curtains just with masking tape, uh, lined them up with the edges because I'm trying to figure out how where to place this wave. So I just needed those in roughly the right spot. I've put some tape on the back of that piece of acetate and I'm just going to use my ATG gun to finish taping this one down. Um, and I you'll see I actually extend this just a little bit past that uh, that right curtain. I'm taking it off here and I'm going to let it drop down and then just I trim it just a little bit past that because I just wanted a little bit of flex. You'll see later on when you're putting the curtains down you're not always entirely sure exactly where they're going to go. You kind of know but you know life happens <laughs> so so this is how I attach most of them I just glue them down or tape them down with the glue gun and uh, trim off the edges I don't think you'd want to have these in one continuous piece I think that uh, wouldn't work terribly well so there they're all uh, all the laminate is attached all the way across and now I'm going to put that stage piece through so you need to cut a little opening, a little slit for it in that middle uh, piece, the middle segment. And so all I did is I sort of lined up that stage with the middle and then I drew a line on either side. Uh, just shifted it off a bit. Um, I think if it's too tight you would have problems with opening and closing this. And I extended that line just a little bit past where it was, took my craft knife and a steel ruler and trim that out and it cuts through really quite well so once I had that out I was just checking to make sure that my stage would go through it and then you need to line these up and put cut them in exactly the same place on the other side okay so now I'm going to put these together now that I've got my stage ready and everything else is done so I'm gluing this outside border or edge and I'm just going to line up these edges and lining it up vertically as well because the curtain is just that eighth of an inch narrower than the, than the base. So I'm doing that and you're going to see in a minute why I use glue and why I said before you're not always sure exactly where that uh, ocean is going to go because I think that I've got these on the edge and I'm pretty sure they were. but the middle sometimes it just isn't quite the middle so here you can see there's a little bit of a gap so I just push them and wiggle and it goes shut just a little bit more and that's where it's going to stay so I'm just going to let that glue dry so now this is the stage and I'm just going to put these little stoppers on uh, I just fold them in half uh, and cut them. They're just there to prevent that little piece from coming right through that slit that we made earlier. So I'm just gluing the back on and I leave a little bit of an extension below the stage and then attach the second one over top. And then I'll just trim this down so that it extends a little bit on the top and bottom. And now that can be fed through. So that goes through the left side and then comes through the right hand opening. And it's going to sit hopefully in the middle and slide back and forth. Now I'm putting the second stopper on on the other end exactly the same way and just trimming this one down to fit. Okay, so this is the front now. I use 110 pound cardstock and I usually double this up you are ending up cutting a lot out of this one. Um, and so I just find the sturdier it is, the better. So you can see I've used a die. I used one from MFT to cut a sort of scalloped circle. You can use whatever you want. It could be a rectangle, could be a square, could be a hexagon, whatever you've got to use that. And then I just used a small circle die to cut um, those thumb openings. 
Uh, and here I'm just showing you with these sleeves. I just eyeball this. I put a little tick mark at the top and another one at the bottom, fold them over, and then I'm going to glue these to the sides. And you want to allow a little bit of slack in these. If they're too tight, it's going to be very difficult to open and close those curtains. So you want to have a little bit of flex there, just like that, in order to let the curtains move through. So now I'm just figuring out where I'm going to put that sentiment. I want that shark on the inside coming up off that stage. And I was going to have the other seagull in there. So I did heat emboss uh, that's that sentiment, and I also did this one on the front, and both these sentiments are from the Gerda Steiner Designs uh, stamp set. I did this one on the front on a scrap piece of cardstock and just uh, hand trimmed it down. I've got this extra piece of uh, laminate that I'm, I wanted to put on the front, and so it actually covers that sentiment, but I think you can still read it well enough. Uh, and this is how you assemble it. So the left curtain is going to go through the left sleeve. And then the right one through the right side. And that's all there is to this. There, There's no attaching it down or anything. It just glides through those. And it never, honestly, I find it never quite closes in the middle. I find that annoys me a little bit, but not enough that I wouldn't want to make it. Uh, and then once you've pulled it out, it stays out. So here I'm, I'm going to attach the shark. Now, this is where things go rather wrong, but I thought I would leave this in because I think it's kind of important. If you're going to use this stage, uh, you'll see what I've done wrong here in a second. I'm just putting this guy on, and I think I've got him far enough over from the edge. But when I open and close that, oh, what's that on the right? <laughs> It's the stage. And I think what I've done is um, the stage was too far over to the right side when I glued him down. And then because that shark is bigger, he won't go through on the other side. So the fix was just cut off that stage and reattach the stoppers. And then I centered it all a little bit better before I attached that shark. So I had to take him off and I've put him a little bit further over. So just be aware of that. If you are attaching anything to the stage, you need to make sure that the whole thing will close. So I always like a surprise on my cards. Uh, and here I am just trying to figure out how can I hide this little seagull. So I figured the cake might just hide him. He was, uh, they're about the right size. So that's all I'm doing here is I've got the seagull attached now and I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put that cake. And when you put anything on this inside uh, front of the or not the inside but the front, just make sure you're only gluing to the edge and that none of the glue is going behind because you'll glue the whole thing down obviously. And over on this side it's exactly the same thing. I'm trying to hide that shark fin. So this little seagull, again, he's only going to get glued on the outside edges and then just attach to the outer uh, circle. These seagulls are so cute. And so then uh, I've got another seagull I wanted to put on the inside. I think seagulls are always in on the party. They're always wanting that cake. So there had to be a lot of seagulls in this one and the shark, of course. Well, actually, there's quite a few sharks in there. So there you have it. So there, it still doesn't quite close. That really bugs me. <laughs> but there, when you open it up, it's uh, lots to see, lots of depth in there. And uh, in real life, that laminating pouch really makes a difference because it, it looks like there's so many layers to the ocean. So it stands up beautifully. And it does close down. And there's room on the back to write a message. So you could leave it like that. Or if that bothers you, you could put, add another a card base to it uh, for something more to write on. And I just thought that's... That's fun. I love these stamps. I thought they went so well together. They're all at the ocean. I'm ready for summer. 
Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope you'll give this a try. Thanks.